This week, Team Wild has travelled north of the border to Scotland to help with the Rodo Coal. The deer are creating havoc on this particular farm, which has planted acres of willow for biofuel. Thousands of pounds worth of damage has been done to this plantation, and much of the crop is already a lost cause. Nowadays, people are coming in and offering money to, to shoot, and they want trophies. Hence, some of the problems that you'll see in this plantation here, where the doe population's really rocketed. Our guide for this Scottish expedition is Andy Richardson, famous for his goose guiding and delivering excellent sport in Fife and all across Scotland. The damage to these trees, you know, it even goes up as far as, as that height. And you know, we don't have red deer here, this is raw. So it's just growing through with this damage and it's it's kind of stunted the growth. You can see the, the healthier trees and and this is what's left. So That's, what do they do? Do they like bite off the yeah, the, the bite off the branches and the shoots at the top? And then they just eat the whole the whole piece. The ground is crisp underfoot this morning. So much so, we have a strong feeling that we won't make a dent in that number quite yet. So we've changed tactics slightly. It's very crisp in there, it's still a very cold morning and it sounds like you're walking on cornflakes. It's too noisy to walk in the willows now. So we've come outside, just along the side of the woodland margin here, on the outside of the willows. We're going to wait here and see if any does come out. If not, we'll go for breakfast and come back later on this afternoon. Unfortunately, it's a no-show. But there's still plenty of time. And Andy reassures us there's plenty of deer. They may be damaging the willow, but with such a high density of young trees, I'm a bit worried about the willow deflecting the path of my bullet. So Andy, I've bought a Ruger M77 and 243 uh, for the for the doe coal. Mm -hmm. But you actually prefer a slightly heavier calibre in and amongst these willows. Yeah, I would say a 30 calibre, 308 or a 306, 180 grain bullet. If it does hit a twig, you've got a fair chance of it carrying on through to the to the beast. Whereas a lighter weight bullet may fragment and... Yeah, and you've got a chance of deflection. So always use enough gun? Always use enough gun. Okay. Later that afternoon, we go to a neighbouring plantation to try our luck. We check every aisle in turn, in the hope of deer. Overhead, the geese are on the move, and so is the doe that Andy spotted. We try to anticipate the direction the deer's heading in and get ready for a shot in the row we think she'll eventually cross. My first attempt proves unsuccessful as she bounds out of the way. Plus, I prefer a clearer shot. We then find our deer. She drops on the spot. So this is a beautiful young doe. This is exactly what we've been looking for. As Andy said this morning, we want to be taking the young ones out and leaving the older does in there. This is one of last year's does, so absolutely perfect for us. Nice body weight, in pretty good condition. Obviously the feeding has been very good. It was a pretty tricky stalk. Andy spotted her pretty early on. Um, just saw a backside disappearing from one row of willow over to another row. And we lost sight of her for a little while. And then we caught up with her. I tried to get into position, but made too much noise. That's what happens when you're a big light like myself. Um, but we managed to stalk her back up here. She didn't see us the first time around, but she heard me. So she wasn't too spooked, but she skipped off. She came up probably about three or four rows up here, and then she presented a shot. And she only presented a neck shot. I'd like to have gone in the body, particularly seeing that probably about 120 yards, so off the knee. Uh, it's, it's, it's a reasonably, well, reasonably difficult shot. Uh, but here she is anyway, so very pleased. First one for the, uh, first one for the larder, and we're going to go off and see if we can get another one. So Andy, are you kind of happy with the way the, that stalk panned out? I'm delighted. And now you can see how difficult it is in these willows. It's keeping track of them going through. Do you follow on fast and keep up with them in the rows? Or do you keep your head and just think, well, it is going in that direction. So we'll just slowly, at the same pace, keep going until we come across it again and again Hello, and again until the shot comes on. So it's lucky we took our time? Oh yeah, in, in here, if you're going 
100 yards in 15 minutes, you're going too fast. As we leave the farm, having successfully taken that young doe, there are animals exactly where we'd hoped to find them earlier. We check the time and come back the following day. To get the best possible view of the field with the willow behind it, we keep low and settle down behind a hawthorn bush. It provides great cover and we're keen to make a bigger impression on the does here. So we, we saw our doe earlier on about 3.30 but she skipped back over into the willow. We're pretty confident she's going to come back so fingers crossed our doe goal will be two doe. Huge numbers. Sometimes you just get that feeling in your water that they're not coming to you. So you have to do the chasing. I spot a doe around 120 yards inside the plantation. I have to keep my movement to a minimum, whilst chasing her from aisle to aisle. It's a real game of cat and mouse. Eventually a shot presents itself, but there's a misfire. I reload and this time the 100 grain Lapua bullet does its job. She's hit, and she's hit pretty hard in the chest. The first round I shot, there was actually a misfire on this cartridge. So, she was with three other does. They've all skipped through into the bushes. There's one smaller buck. He went a little while ago, he walked on. So we're just gonna give her a few minutes to calm down. I'm gonna go and pick her up. I heard it was a nice, good, clean contact in the chest area, nice deep third, so. Fingers crossed she won't be too far. I wait for a few minutes to see if there are any others still milling around. Then I spot a younger deer, clearly looking for the doe. This follower has a pronounced limp and even in the low light I'm pretty confident it's a buck. He may be out of season but the issue of animal welfare must play a role. Without sticks or a rest I need a stable shooting position. Sitting is perfect for this and I successfully take him too. Okay. Right. Okay, perfect. Now, this is obviously a young buck follower. I shot the older doe, um, which was, we're still looking for her at the moment, and this follower came back to look for us, clearly one of her, one of her fawns. And I noticed he was limping slightly, and so on the back of his leg here, he's got an open sore, an open wound, in his leg looks like he's tried to leap over some barbed wire so not only was he uh, looking for his mother but also injured so I thought we'd take him out just to be on the safe side there's no need for him to be in there in that condition here she is here's our uh, here's our doe now she's an older doe and, uh, and obviously she had that young buck follower with her but now she's, she's in great condition, good, healthy in the body. And as we can see, perfect hard shot. T43 is, is more than enough gun for a, for a roe deer, provided you've got a clear shot to it. So yes, very pleased, very happy with the shot. So our row call is back up to two, plus a young wounded follower. So I think we've done a great service here this evening and I've earned myself a pint. It's been a real experience hunting in this sort of dense cover and I'll definitely be back for more. For more information on hunting with Andy Richardson, visit www.wildshotsofscotland.co.uk. Team Wild will be back next Wednesday. Visit www.teamwild.tv.